I'm Dave with Beast Made Reviews, of course a channel dedicated to reviewing quality at different price points. Now when I was younger, a teenager, just learning to play guitar, I was just learning how to play chords, very simple things on guitar, learning to play Beatles songs. We had a little band with me and my brother and my friend down the street, and I remember about that time, it was in the 90s, there was just an explosion of guitar-centered music. And every Saturday night, I remember watching TV, looking for the next band to play on Saturday Night Live to see what they played, what guitar they played, see how they played it, and then try to put two and two together. And I remember learning about the instrument itself, learning which brands were good, like Fender and Gibson. And one of the brands kept coming up. I would look in a guitar magazine, and I would find this other brand that was getting bigger, and it was Paul Reed Smith. Around that time, I went to a local music shop, and lo and behold, they had a few Paul Reed Smith guitars there. They were a Paul Reed Smith dealer. Not only that, but they had a dragon, a Paul Reed Smith dragon on display, very, very high. You couldn't play it. <laughs> it was very high on display for everyone to see, and it was a gorgeous guitar. I had never seen a guitar like that in my life. It was a piece of art. I bought a guitar magazine, rifled through the pages, and found a PRS ad. I wrote down the address, and I wrote them asking them if they just had like a brochure or a magazine or catalog of some sort. They did, and they sent me this. This is my original brochure from Paul Reed Smith. It is ancient and it has, it's just a pullout of their products and their line at the time. And on the back, there is a picture of the uh, guitar player from Primus. Now, I don't know exactly when I got this, but the copyright on the bottom of the picture here says 1995. So that gives you at least a little bit of clues how old this is. But I have had this for years, and I actually put this on my wall as something to look at as kind of like a dream guitar to get eventually. And that brings me to today's video, which is a review on the new Paul Reed Smith SE DGT. <laughs> This is a really cool relic of the past uh, version of Paul Reed Smith in the 90s. But since then, PRS Guitars has become even more prolific and is now one of those kind of third players in the guitar game, I think. It's one of those guitar companies that everyone knows about. Now, the story of the original DGT, I think, is pretty cool. There's a guitar player named David Grissom, great guitar player. Wow, what a, what a great guitar player. He struck a friendship with Paul Reed Smith, and they slowly started to develop a guitar for David Grissom. It was a signature guitar called the DGT or David Grissom Trim, which is their tremolo model on their guitar. The guitar itself is very Paul Reed Smith in the way that it sounds. I think there's uh, DGT pickups, which are specified for David Grissom. And then the neck is probably the most famous part of the guitar, which is based on David Grissom's favorite Gibson 335 neck. So in many ways, the way that I kind of see this guitar is kind of a mix of Paul Reed Smith mixed with David Grissom's taste in 335s. It's not really a 335, and it is very much a PRS guitar, but it's kind of a mixture of both worlds. <laughs>
Mm-hmm. Now, the SE line of Paul Reed Smith is a, an overseas produced guitar made with really high quality standards that Paul Reed Smith is known for. Paul Reed Smith, of course, is based in Maryland, but this is made, I believe, in Indonesia. And not only does it have to meet Paul Reed Smith's quality standards, it also had to meet David Grissom's quality standards. He wasn't going to put his name on something without having to try it first and without really loving it. Paul Reed Smith has a number of videos on this if you want to go watch the whole process. I thought it was super cool to watch kind of behind the veil of how they make a guitar. I thought it was really interesting, really informative. At one point, David Grissom, receiving one of the prototypes he felt the neck and thought at the 12th fret it felt a little thick one of the people at paul reed smith noted that it was two one thousandths of an inch thicker at the 12th fret more so than the original dgt that is how specific david grissom has become now all that to say this is david grissom's guitar it's just made in a way that is more affordable And I will say this personally, I have played a number of Paul Reed Smith guitars. They all are great. One of the things that Paul Reed Smith guitars are known for is how much quality they pack in a guitar and how perfect they are each and every time you play one. Each guitar is very consistent. You're not gonna have a whole lot of surprises from guitar to guitar. And those same quality standards are here with the SE DGT. This isn't a cheaper version of the DGT necessarily. This is a DGT guitar It just happens to be at a better price point. Now let's get into a few specs of this guitar. Now this is a solid body guitar with a mahogany body, maple cap, and a mahogany neck. It has a rosewood fretboard, 22 frets, 10 inch radius. It's a set neck and the classic Paul Reed Smith 25 inch scale length. It has a double acting truss rod with of course the DGT neck profile. It has a graphite nut which is cut really low. And I don't know what these tuners are, but these are proprietary tuners with Paul Reed Smith, and they're pretty good. They're nice and wide, and they're a little bit different than the ones they put on the American-made core model guitars. The pickups on this are the DGT-S model pickups, and these are the import models of the DGT pickups. They're different from the American-made ones, but they sound, as far as I have heard, almost identical. There's a master tone, bridge, and neck volume, but the volume pots are switched to where the bridge is on top and the neck is on the bottom. There's also a push-pull coil split, which I think sounds amazing. And of course, the control cavities on the back have the plastic plates on there, and they're not recessed into the body like the American-made models are. Now, right now, it comes in two different colors, tobacco sunburst with flame maple veneer and the PRS bird inlays, and the other is a gold top with moon inlays and a kind of faux binding with the natural maple on the sides of the finish there. Both look great, but I got the gold top for review and I am thrilled with it. I think the gold top looks phenomenal. I love the moons. I think the moons are really underrated for Paul Reed Smith and the gold looks fantastic on this. The finish is great. The back is actually kind of a dark red or brown color. I'm not sure what the finish is, but I think it's polyurethane. And of course it has the tremolo, which is amazing. It's very smooth and set up to be floating right out of the box. And it also comes with an SE gig bag, which I really like as well. Now, when I got this in my hand, it felt amazing. The neck is great. It's kind of a thicker C. It's not the thickest C I've ever played before, but it fills your hand, I think. And I think it gets maybe a little bit flatter as you go down the neck. It feels great. It's one of the best necks I've played. I usually like thicker style necks, and this feels phenomenal. Now, the fit and finish is virtually perfect. I mean, it is exactly what you would expect from a Paul Reed Smith. There's almost nothing to complain about here. I found everything to be really 
tip top shape. The only thing I found personally on mine was I found one sharp fret edge and that was it. That's really easy to fix. That's something I can fix literally in about 30 seconds. So no major complaints here. Now, of course, with the 25 inch scale length, you get a little bit different sound and you get a little bit different feel as well. Now, bending notes on this is effortless. It feels great. There's still a little bit of tension, which I like. The strings still feel like they have a little bit of weight behind them, which I really love. <laughs> Right, now let's get to the sound. Now the sound is great. Sometimes with overseas produced guitars, the pickups to me sound different. They don't sound exactly right. These pickups sound really good and they're matched really well as well, which I think is the most important thing. You can always tweak EQ settings later, but if the pickups aren't matched really well, it makes it very difficult. These are matched great. Now the sound that I usually kind of describe PRS in my mind is fat but focused. I'm not sure if it's their pickups or the scale length or both of them put together, but I get that. I really like that sound a lot. The low end is really full, mid-range is really fat, and there's a little bit of clarity and snap and even sizzle in the high end that I really like with these pickups. The notes are full and clear, and there's plenty of bass and mid-range, but doesn't really sound woofy. There's enough clarity to hear every single note, even with complex chords and even with overdrive. And these pickups are really dynamic, and I mean really dynamic. Dynamic, of course, in volume as well, so if you pick harder, it will get louder, which is really neat, but also in the mid-range. What I find really interesting about these pickups is the more you dig in, the fatter it gets. split is great. Coil splits don't sound exactly like single coil guitars, but I'm okay with that. I like the way they sound on their own. They have a unique sound all by themselves, but the main thing that I'm looking for with a single coil split is volume difference. A lot of times you get a volume drop. PRS does kind of a different take on a coil split with a little bit different tweaks in the electronics, so you really don't lose that much signal in a coil split, if any. <laughs> Now, though I have played many PRS guitars, the core models of guitars in the past, I haven't played a DGT model before. So I haven't played both to see how both compare, but looking on YouTube, I watched a few videos of people who have, and they sound strikingly similar. <laughs> To me, this is such a cool guitar. I think it has a lot of mojo in the way it sounds and feels. I like the kind of nod back to kind of uh, heritage guitars, but yet it's still very modern at the same time. To me, what I like in this guitar, and maybe Paul Reed Smith in general, is kind of a smooth stone of sorts. You get some guitars out there that are diamonds in the rough. 
But PRS is that smooth stone that's been kind of honed and polished and cleared until it's just perfectly smooth. I think if you're looking to buy a DGT in general, this is gonna be hard to turn down. Unless you just want the American made guitar, unless you want the kind of maybe higher attention to detail on certain things, if you like the finish a little bit better. But at this price point, it's a great deal. Whenever I put this in my hands, I don't think that this is a foreign made guitar. I think this is a PRS guitar. It feels like a PRS guitar. It feels like a high quality instrument. It just happens to be made at a cheaper price. And I think that is amazing. I love everything about this guitar. I love how full and focused everything sounds with some clarity and some sizzle and snap on the top. The neck is amazing. I love how consistent PRS is and I don't have to really worry about playing 100 guitars to find the right one. I know that if I play one once and like it, I can just buy it there. They have just an insane amount of precision so the guitar comes out perfect each time. I think this could be one of those guitars that is kind of the guitar to rule them all. Kind of the guitar that you can play for a lot of different things. It is so versatile. So I love it. I think it's a fantastic guitar. Now, Paul Reed Smith graciously loaned me this guitar for a few days. I filmed all my footage and had to send it back, but it was a great joy playing this guitar and really reminded me a lot of the kind of aspirational thoughts I had about guitar, learning guitar as a teenager and beyond. It was really cool to visit those days and really cool to play this guitar. I have always wanted a PRS guitar. I'm really glad that I got to try it because now I'm really questioning which guitar I want to get from PRS. I haven't gotten rid of this poster for a reason. It goes through my mind from time to time that this still is a teenage dream and one day I will have a PRS. And I have to say, this SEDGT really is at the top of my list now as far as guitars. It's that good. I don't miss that it's not made in America. I think it's great on its own. And I think that if you're looking to get an SEDGT because you like the original one, go ahead and do it. This is a great guitar for PRS, one that I'm really excited about, and I think you will be too. Thank you for watching. Let me know your thoughts about the DGT below. I'll see you next time. I'm Dave with Beastmate Reviews. Bye.